Have you ever started creating a flat lay for your business only to discover that you cannot make it look the way you want to? My name is Marcela Macias and in this video I will show you the mistakes that you are making when creating flat lays and what you should be doing instead. is a collaboration with landscape artist Margarita Nadal, who will show you, in turn, how to use flowers in your flat lay and how to make sure that they always look perfect. Margarita has a fantastic channel full of tips for your garden and you should definitely go look at it if you speak Spanish and if you like gardening and plants and everything flowers. So what is a flat lay? A flat lay is a photo of different objects laid on a background that is taken from above. So you put your camera on top and you shoot straight below. There is nothing three-dimensional about them, there are no objects out of focus, and the great thing is that you can take them beautifully with just the camera of your phone and without needing to add expensive lenses or anything complicated. They are very popular on Instagram and they normally show a display of objects on desks but they can also show, uh, for example, clothes on a bed or other um, objects that you can choose. There are photos like this and this and this. They look easy to take. But if you have tried before to create a flat lay on your own, you may have discovered that they are not so much so. So in order to help you, I have compiled in this video the most common mistakes that I have seen online so that you don't need to make them. And I will also provide you the solutions so that you know exactly what to do instead. So let's begin with the mistakes. Mistake number one, you don't have a strategy behind your flat lay. This is the number one mistake most people make. Having a strategy behind your flat lay means that you will know exactly what you will want people to focus on. You know exactly what are the feelings that you want to convey with your flat lay and you know exactly why each and every object that you have placed is there. Here are a couple of questions that you need to ask yourself before you even begin to think about creating a flat lay. Number one, what do you want to showcase? What is the object where you want people's eyes to focus on? What will be the focal point of your flat lay? Number two, what feeling do you want to provoke? A feeling of aspiration, luxury, fun, joy, coziness. What do you want people to feel when they look at your flat lay? Number three, how will you be using the photo? Will you add text to it? Will you add a color block? Will you add uh, for example, other embellishments? Will you be cropping the image in different ones so that you can maximize its usage? Will you be using it only on your website? Will you be using it also for social media? Number four, what objects do you have around your house that speak about who you are as a person and that can be included in the flat lay? What objects do you have that speak about your brand? What objects tell or can remind people of the stories that you have told about you and your brand and your mission in your blog post or on social media that can anchor those ideas in the photo. Let me show you now some examples of how this free work has translated in the photos of some of my clients so that you can have an idea and then can start applying these questions to your own photos. In this photo for Maggi Carles, we chose blocks for the ear because Maggi famously uses baby blocks in her video backgrounds, clips in her brown colors and the pen with a childlike feel to match Maggi's illustrations. In Luisa Bazzi's photos, we used all props in Luisa's brown colors, yellow and turquoise, left lots of white space to signify simple luxury and used Chinese bolts for balance and Chinese coins for abundance. In Andrea's photos, we used gold and red, the colors of the first and third chakra, to signify abundance, a key to symbolize new beginnings, and crystals and a candle to symbolize a spiritually aligned business. Mistake number two. You don't have a clear focal point or the focal point is not used correctly. 
This is by far the biggest mistake. This means that you have not decided where you want the eyes of your viewers to focus on your photo. You have not decided which are the objects that you want them to notice first, that you want to call their attention. And this is something that you need to decide before you start shooting. What do you want people to notice first? And how do you do it? You place those objects in strategic points that I am going to show you right now. Number one, the center of the image. It's more or less how I am placed now in this image. It's not very much used, but in some cases it can be very, very useful. And what you do with the rest of the props is you frame the object to create a frame so that that object in the center takes focal point. Here is an example of how we did it with one of my clients. Number two, the rule of thirds. A rule of thirds is created when you draw two lines vertically and two lines horizontally in your background and place the most important objects in the crossing between those lines. One very important note, if you are creating a flat lay with negative or white space because you will add text to it later, make sure to, to treat that white space where the text will be as the focal point. Why? Because that is what you will want people to focus on when they look at your picture. Mistake number three, there are too many objects distracting from the focal point. So you do have a focal point, you know where you want people to focus on, but you have placed so many things around it that no one can actually notice your focal point. And listen, I love props. I love scouting for props, selecting props, styling with props, but the key with them is not to overdo it, especially if you are not a professional stylist. So if that is your case, start removing. Remove until you feel that what is there is adding to the image and not detracting from it. I will show you how and where to place block props correctly in the next point. Mistake number four, the lines in your flat lay direct the eye away from your focal point. What does it mean? Do you remember those foam fingers or those images that you probably see on social media with people pointing somewhere or looking somewhere? What this is doing is directing the eye to what you want them to focus on. However, if you have lines in objects that are taking away, that are like arrows pointing out of your focal point, then people will not look at what you want them to look at and they will not take the action that you want them to take. Let me show you a couple of examples of what I mean. Take a look at this crystal. It's a crystal, yes, but if you can see, if I turn it like that, it has a point. It's an arrow that points straight at where I want people to look. Take a look at this pen. Arrow again. The point points directly the view to where you want them to look. Same with any pen. Spoons, pens, another type of pen, a crystal. Those little paper markers that you have to mark the pages, they are also styled as arrows. You use them in your flat lays in order to point towards you want them to point. So this is what you have to do now. You have to take a look at the shape of the objects that you are planning to use in your flat lay and make sure that the part that could be considered the point of an arrow is always pointing towards the object that you want people to focus on. Make sure that they are all like pointed fingers in order to direct the view to where you want it to go. Way number two that you can do this is using hands. You can either hold objects around the uh, main focal point in which way you will be framing it or you can hold directly the focal point. Mistake number five, the composition is not balanced. You have too many objects on one side, no objects or very few objects on the other side. Always remember, the human eye likes symmetry. The only time when you can do an asymmetrical composition is when the symmetry is going to be provided by text. So you have to put objects on one side and leave the other side white with negative space, but the symmetry will still be provided. It will still be there. It will just be with words. Mistake number six, and it is huge. Some objects are out of focus. Now, why are some object, objects out of focus? Why are they or not crisp and sharp as they should be in a flat lay? There are two reasons for this. Number one, you don't have the right settings on your DSLR. What does this mean? Your aperture is too 
small. When the aperture is small, some the, the objects that are in the foreground are going to be in focus, but the ones uh, away from it, that are far from it, are not going to be. When I shoot a flat lay, I always have my aperture at, at, at f4 or higher, generally at f7.1. So if you have a DSLR, make sure that you don't have anything before below 4. Lower numbers are great for close-ups, but not for images where you need absolutely everything to be in perfect focus. Big, big reason why some objects may be out of focus number 2. So there are different heights in the objects of your flat lay. Of course, you may have a notebook and a pen and they may have different sides, but the problem is that when the height is too different, like you have placed too many notebooks on top of each other, or you have a big uh, a bouquet with, of flowers with very high stems, the difference in height will be too noticeable. And either the flowers or your main focal point, another focal point, will be out of focus. What I personally do is I put them in the shortest glass that I have with a little bit of water and if they are roses, an aspirin to keep them alive. Why do I do that? Because they will still be, look fresh and look beautiful, but they will not have a height that is so different that it will affect the focus of the, of the flat lay. When it comes to focus also, always remember that you need to set the focus on your focal point to make sure that at the very least that is in super sharp and crisp focus. Then you focus on the other sides. Then you focus on the other objects and make sure that they all look alike. But keep those two rules to yourself. High aperture and please, 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 make sure that your objects don't have very diverse heights. Mistake number seven, your whites are not white. Your white background either looks yellowish or bluish. Your objects that were supposed to be white and that it is important that they are white are actually not. That is a white balance problem and this is how you can solve it. Number one, set custom white balance in your camera. If you have a DSLR, this should be relatively easy. You have the instructions in your manual and it's not a complicated thing to do. In my cam uh, camera, which is a Canon, what I have to do is I have to set custom white balance by taking a photo of a very white object then the camera adjusts the rest of the whites to match what I consider a pure white. Way number two to do it, post-production. I, I correct white balance discrepancies in Camera Raw, in Adobe Camera Raw. You can do it in other say, programs as well. If this sounds too complicated and you are going to be spending a ton of time in Photoshop, don't worry, but this is what I would recommend especially when it comes to backgrounds that are the trickiest to correct in post-production, choose a background that is not white. Choose a wood background. Choose a um, background that you have covered with fabric, for example. These linen uh, fabrics look absolutely fantastic for many backgrounds. Choose a marble background. Choose anything that is not complete and pure white. Some color backgrounds that look really nice are grays or light blues or light pinks, depending on the colors of your brand. There are also some people that shoot on black backgrounds and they look fantastic if your brand has these dramatic um, visuals. If you have dramatic visuals, then go for black, go for brown, go for deep colors. Whatever you do, choose something that does not complicate your life. The only color is not white, you can choose another background, do whatever is easier for you, but make sure that if you are shooting with white, you have the right white balance in your camera or that you have corrected it properly in post-production. Mistake number eight. My pet peeve. Your flat leg likes personality. And when I mean personality, I mean it likes your personality. It's a generic flat lay that anyone could have, or even worse, it says the opposite of what you are and what your brand stands for. Listen, as a businesswoman, your flat lays, as all your photos, should be contributing to putting outside into the world your brand story. They should speak about who you are, about what you believe in, about your mission. Your flat lays should showcase your brand personality. They should tell people about who you are and start conversations. Lots of people fall into the trap of the luxury lifestyle and the luxury looking flat lace. 
but maybe your friend does not stand for that and then why should you use those flat lays in your own business? Your flat lays need to tell to give people the same idea that you give them with your words and they should stand for the same thing that you stand for. When you choose to create your own, there are some ways to make sure that your personality is present in those photos and this is what I'm going to show you right now. Think about what do you talk about in your blog and in your social media posts? What objects can remind people of things that you have talked about or discussed in your blog post or social media posts? What objects could act as an anchor of the core of your message? And which objects reproduce the shape of your logo? Let me give you a couple of examples of how I have done this with photos of my clients. In this photo for Maya Canvas to promote her app, we chose books with text about time management, planners about goals, books that talked about family, craft objects for Maggie's target market of Etsy sellers, a postcard with a quote from The Little Prince, which is Maggie's favorite book, Scrabble letters that spelled up, and a rocket to symbolize a launch. In this photo for Andrea Hilbrunner, we use colors and quotes symbolizing intuition, gratitude, spirituality, and triangular earrings reproducing Andrea's logo. In this photo for Marvel Canseco, we appeal to her Mexican heritage by adding a traditional chocolate mixer as a prop. So let's recap the biggest mistakes and what you need to do instead. Number one, you don't have a strategy. What you need to do? Get a strategy. Number two, your flat lays don't have a focal point. Get a focal point. Decide what you want people to focus on. Number three, too many objects distracting from the focal point. Solution, remove, remove, remove. Leave the essentials there. Number four, the lines in your flat lay take away from your flat lay. Solution, use hands to focus people where you want the eye to go, or make sure that all the objects act as arrows pointing to your focal point. Number five, your composition is not balanced. Solution, remember, Symmetry, whenever possible. Mistake number six, some objects are out of focus. Solution, aperture, four or up, preferably around seven, and make sure that all objects are around the same height. Number seven, your whites are not white. And the solution, set your white balance or use a background that is not naturally white. And finally, number eight, your flat lay does not have personality and when we meet personality we mean your brand's personality. Solution, add some with objects that are actually meaningful to you and then transmit the same feelings that your brand transmits. I hope you like this video, I hope you liked all these ideas. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the button below this video. Share it with all your friends and don't forget to watch Margarita's video which is in the link, in the link below. Again, my name is Marcela Macias, I was a pleasure having you here and I will see you soon with more videos to help you grow your business beyond your wildest dreams. Mm -hmm.